There's the bouquet left by the consulate of Ghana. There's also one from New Zealand. Now, along with the cards, the poems, and the thousands of flowers, millions of dollars are also being raised through GoFundMe. It's a crowdfunding source that has been picking up steam and has raised millions of dollars for multiple tragedies in recent months. A person uh, that passed this week, unfortunately, was close to me and many other people from the Ryerson family. She was an alum of the university, Anne Marine D'Amico. People came together quite quickly and they were able to organize a quick um, crowdfund with the GoFundMe page to give her and her family some support. The official Toronto Strong page has raised more than $1.5 million. Vegas Strong has raised north of $11 million. And the funds for Humble Broncos has raised $15 million, 90% of which was donated by Canadians according to GoFundMe. It's a crowdfunding surge that has brought out some of the best in humanity when it comes to financial support in the face of devastation. Startup insiders believe this could just be the beginning for the world's largest social fundraising platform. The most exciting thing about tech and where, where we are today is that uh, I say we're at a peak, but this peak is really chapter one of a big, of a, of a pretty massive book. Like anything, you need to be careful, though, where you're giving your money to. Unfortunately, when there are tragedies, sometimes people try to profit off that. Yeah, it's no different than any traditional means of charity right now as well, right? When I'm giving money to a charity today, I want to make sure that I'm giving it to a trusted source. Does something of this size, of this nature, of this power, spell the end to some traditional charities and organizations? It could, but at the same time, you know, if I'm looking at a lot of charities as well that are leveraging these kind of platforms to support their organizations today as well, so some people are jumping on the bandwagon. Welcome to GoFundMe. GoFundMe began back in May of 2010. Mainly, it was used to help crowdsource cash for medical expenses in the U.S. Today, more than 50 million people have donated roughly $5 billion. A 5% service fee used to go to GoFundMe, but as of November 2017, the service is now free in Canada and the U.S. Today, we spoke on the phone with the tech company's CEO, who was adamant that user trust is paramount. When money comes in to GoFundMe and you're raising money for, on behalf of someone else, that person is the only person who can withdraw the funds. So, so we do a lot of checking and, and, and verifying on, on the veracity of, of a person. And based on the systems that we've built, you know, well under one-tenth of one percent of our donation volume results in any kind of fraud. And to the point of the GoFundMe guarantee, we will refund any money that anybody asks us to. So, so we take it very seriously. What happens after GoFundMe? You know, we look at Humboldt, for example, that's $15 million. There's lots of different victims. Does GoFundMe have a hand in what happens to the money after it is sent to the person who set up the account? We make sure that the beneficiaries and the fundraisers have access to the, the, the best practices and the best and brightest minds in distributing funds like this. It's, it's not something that we do, but we advise and make sure they have access to information and people. Um, so, so it's up to the organization that is the beneficiary of the funds being raised to figure out how to distribute. Now, there is a standard credit card visa fee if you are using your credit card to donate. And there's also a tip option. When you're donating, GoFundMe gives you the option of sending them some money, a tip to help them keep on going. Now, I wanted to show you here, there's all those flowers out front, but just take a look at this. The flowers actually are now wrapping around the back of the memorial, as well as posters, letters, poems, and while... This is definitely appreciated. I was speaking with some people who have kind of taken up organizing the memorial here. They encourage people to continue bringing their flowers and their candles, though they say what is needed is money for the families, for the injured, for the victims, and they're hoping that you can do that through the official Toronto GoFundMe account.